Hi, my name is Tony and I'm from The Sub Company and today we've got another amazing board for you. This time, the Infinity Blackfish with a special guest. So here we are with the Infinity Blackfish, but not just the Blackfish. We're here with Mr. Infinity himself. Dave, thank you so much for joining us here at the Sub Company. Yeah, I appreciate you having me, man. It's always fun to uh, talk shop with the with the shops <laughs> and the shop owners and whatnot. And uh, we're in one of the best ones, the Sub Co. So I'm um, excited to be here, man. Well, that's thank kind you. Of you to say thank you very much. Um, so look, the Blackfish. Um, I know it's dear to your heart. It's your first, your original race board, if you like, that you kind of created at Infinity. Uh, and this, the latest iteration of it, albeit the dugout, is available also as a flat deck. Um, can you just talk us through really the evolution of the board and really what's led to this absolute rocket ship that we've got here? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, the Blackfish definitely has a little, you know, little place in my heart. It was the kind of the, I consider like the race design that put me on the map as far as like a race board designer, so to speak. And um, it's just, you know, evolved from, from the very beginning. And at the time, you know, it really was kind of revolutionary in sub race design. You know, everything was pointy, you know, maybe um, pintails, uh, rounded bottoms and things like that. And as the sport started growing with the battle of the paddle and doing the surf race and everything, we just started looking at alternative designs to really ride a wave easier. Um, and with that came more stability through the chop and, and um, you know, being fast off the line, just kind of an all around, all purpose race board. And it's been cool because, it, you know, this board's won flat water sprints, you know, like 200 meter sprints were like, initially be like, why would that, you know, wow, this isn't a flat water board, but you know, just the hydrodynamics of, of more of a displacement or a, more of like a planning hall yeah. leads to that fast sprinting which you know initially we wouldn't think that right um so it's just been it's just cool because it, it, like this is one of the boards that you know it's, it's really easy for even a beginner racer to hop in and just get used to it right away and and obviously the pros can dial it up and kind of take them to places where you, where we didn't think it could go so it's just it fits a lot of people fits a lot of waters um and now we offer it in two styles of cockpit, just depending on what you like, you know? Um, the original one was a flat deck, um, made to go in and out of surf, so, you know, it's not filling with water. Um, but like I said, as it, you know, evolved, you know, we started doing downwinders in this board. Um, a lot of guys want to, you know, cross channels on this board. Yeah. So people started wanting even a few more features for choppier water. So it really has a wide range of conditions and, um, definitely you know a signature in our line the blackfish it's hugely capable just the breadth of the board it's almost like the four by four and kind of like the infinity lineup i remember the first time i ever saw a blackfish used in anger was um with uh when kyle lenny visited on the app tour probably about four years ago at london stop yeah. and it's like okay cool and you see the sprints and you're like mm, okay all of a sudden the thing just tore off and i think you won the sprints for the event there as well and it's crazy to see for all intents and purposes, an all-water board be just truly that versatile and present so little compromise. Yeah, I think um, that event in particular definitely was a turning point, I think, for a lot of, uh, like, for the industry, really, because just the impact of Kai alone, you know, there's a Kai Lenny effect, but, you know, he was gone from the sport for three years, and then he decides to show up in L London, and it's not, you know, it's not on his old sponsors on Infinity Board, so that automatically peaks interest alone but for him to go out and win that event in the style in the manner that he did yeah on a blackfish in flat water it definitely raised some eyebrows and you know Shea Fowdy happened to win the women's at the same time so it's obviously one of the best events for us we've had but um it just it, you know just kind of proved that out of the gates kind of speed that a that a planing hall has opposed to something with the nose um like a flat water board so yeah they they choose it in, in sprinty type stuff but but yeah, it's it's a versatile board. Sure. So and like the Blackfish Rocker compared to like the Whiplash, um, it's still fairly flat in the middle, but it just has more bend at the tips, um, and that's just to 
you know, have it slide into different angles of swell and chop and, and just kind of adjust to what you're paddling. Um, the nose has always been really bulbousy and round, and that's just a really forgiving nose. And forgiving, what I mean is like if there's cross swell, it you know, all you got to do is load your downwind rail and just rolls right under it, right? Yeah. And, and you can stay on course where if, a, if it's sharp and it's in the water, you know, it tends to grab the nose more and you got to be careful with that. So it's just really versatile against bumpy stuff. Um, so we're always looking to, you know, the one thing on a planning hall, specifically paddling into chop, yeah. a lot of people will say they're slower because they're just, they're kind of, they're not adjusting their stroke to the style of paddling. They're so like, you know, they tend to slap down a little bit more where a pointy nose will just go in and cut it away. So a lot of people like flat water boards for specifically going in a chop, but really you should be adjusting your, your stroke to the swell. I, I call it, I like to call it Morse code paddling. They're like, deet, 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 deet. so instead of like being in your like, you know, rhythmic paddle, you have to change your paddle and meet that swell with the nose, right? So it'd be, it could be like, ka, 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 you know, ka, yeah. ka. So that's what that nose does really well. And if you just adjust, it's very efficient upwind. Um, but what we've done is to kind of combat that. Um, so you don't, you could take a little bit more of the thinking out of it is the nose has been refined, um, just got a little sharper, little um, taller. So it kind of punches away of easier. Um, so if you, if you meet the swell with your nose and a stroke at the same time, it just punches through it. Um, so that's one thing we worked on specifically with this board was just to take a little bit more of the thinking out of paddling upwind specifically. Um, otherwise downwind it's nice. It slips right in, slides right in, um, going in and out of surf. It just parts it. But it remains really stable. Yeah. That's one of the really striking things we found with it, paddling it here and playing around, lots of chop and behind and off the back of boats yes. and so on as well, is it's just, it does everything that you've said and you can generate that additional lift as you put, you know, on that catch phase of the paddle stroke to lift the board up. But it's stable and it just, as it punches you, that volume really starts to kick in where you want it and where you put it in the board. Yeah, and, and that's it, it, just like you're saying, like the the... The nose is, has a lot of volume, so it's tall. And um, so, you know, it's almost like if it's sinking the board, it's popping right back up because it's so volume up there. Um, but a lot of it is also the outline, you know, the, the real parallel outline, yeah. which became popular over the years. Um, you know, sometimes we refer to it as a cigarette, you know, it's just really thin and just straight. And that helps with those boards as far as like, you know, just being stable throughout like you know, whether you're dipping down or dipping up, you always have that kind of feel because it's, it stays the max width longer with yeah. the parallel rail. It doesn't pull in as fast. So that helps with that kind of side angle chop and all that and making it real versatile that way. What we found with some female customers as well, particularly that paddle this board, while we have a lot of boards here, you know, that, that there is more volume in the front of the Blackfish, but less so when compared to other brands. And Often we get a request from some female paddlers that they prefer a board that's lower volume in some respects, so it's more manageable. Yep. And yeah, the feedback from this is it's really working for male paddlers and female paddlers, and there's no real distinction or hard line drawn. It really is that capable of a board in the hands of a huge selection of paddlers. Yeah, and um, like you'll see, it doesn't really taper off all that much down there, so the volume stays kind of constant through that, yep. and it just like the balance point of the board is, pr is is wider than than a normal board just because of the way the volume's positioned and that helps like a lot of it like we call this recovery volume right in this area and that's just like when you're dipping down it, it pops back up yeah and this recovery volume is pulled forward longer so that's why it has that thicker nose just for that kind of recovery I mean in my opinion like dugout versus flat deck is it's very personal you know what I mean um, I prefer a flat deck just in, in the conditions that I paddle in in California. You know, we go in and out of the surf from a beach a lot. Um, it feels, you know, I'm a lifelong surfer, so it feels real surfy, you know. Um, but it is fun to hop in the dugout for some reason, like even just as simply, you kind of feel like the commander of your ship a little bit more, you know. But, you know, the benefits of it are just, you know, side to side stability and chop. Um, you know, you're, you're down a little bit further and you have a little bit more of the volume above. And it just, it gives you a little bit more real secondary stability. That's, I mean, you got to really lean over to fall out of this thing, you know, cause yeah. that you lean over, it helps that big rails helping you that. And sometimes a flat deck, 
you know, once you get it under, that water pulls you down. So um, there are benefits to it. You know, there are certain things like sometimes it's hard for people to crawl into these, you know, so there's certain ways you got to crawl in from to the back end. from the back end. And, you know, if you're, if you got a lot of buddies and you're trying to put four boards on a roof rack, you know, the dugouts become a little bit of a pain in the butt, but, um, you know, they're, they're fun to paddle and, uh, you know, we're stoked to offer both because, you know, it's fun to have the choices. Well, yeah. And you've got that choice now for sure. With the dugout, as we've got one here in front of us as well, the thing that seems to wash through all of the infinity boards that are dugouts is this nice, steady, no surprises, consistent transition as you come up out of the dugout, which you don't seem to trip over. There's nothing too aggressive about it. It's just where you expect it to be. Yeah, absolutely. And that's by design for sure, because you know this board, this board was born in the surf. So to ride a wave, you got to get back and get back fast and you don't, you don't want to be tripping over stuff. And, um, so that transition from the tail down to the deepest part is very, very smooth. And, um, you know, that's by design and the rails kind of die out where the sweet spot is to, yeah. to, to, um, pivot turn. And that's another cool little thing is that like the traction, you see it's staggered patterns. So it's like flat, then it gets um, more grippy with the squares to flat squares. And that's, that's by design for, so you don't have to look down where you are. Like you could feel where you are at the yeah. board. And, um, I really love that cause you get the grip and then, you, you know, you're, you're backpelling to go catch the wave or buoy turn. You're like, okay, I'm in the flat spot. And then, you know, you know, you're not turning until you're back on the grip yeah. again. So, um, yeah, and that's just really cool. And we always put a giant kick tail on there. That's kind of like the last ditch effort to not make <laughs> you fall. But um, yeah, I think it's all kind of planned out and, it, and it, it, it's it's clean and, it, and yeah, it seems to work out. And the tail's nicely pulled in. Yeah, like, uh, like uh, there's always a, um, a release point in the board that I like to work with and that's where the width of the tail matches up with the placement of the box. And I always want the the release to be right after the fin. Um, you'll see a lot of boards that the, the fin box is actually in the release point. And to me, it's just adding drag into drag. So that's why the tail will stay a little bit wider and then we dip it in and pull it in after the release point. Yeah. Um, it's still kind of wide, but that's just for stability and to ride the, ride the, the tail and buoy turn and all that stuff. So, um, I mean, it's all there. It's just, it's all mapped out. Like all these little things you don't really think about, but they add up to those incremental you know, gains that, that we were talking. And that's that refinement and those marginal gains, just yeah. evolution. Yeah, you know, for I think sure. You touched on it uh, in our whiplash video. If you haven't seen that, make sure you go check that out. But in terms of how you imagine it almost man evolving. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. You, you kind of evolving those shapes exactly. that you kind of go through. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, you know, if we're not going to release a board until, until we do get gains, you know what I mean? There's no reason to do that because, you know, just like every other brand, there's guys winning on these boards already. So it, it, there's no reason to invest in a new design unless we're hundred percent believe that it's better than the last one. So, um, even if there's small changes, you know, that's what we're going to do. We're committed to making the best board. Yeah. Well, you've done that in the blackfish for sure. The, uh, look, let's roll it over real quick as well. And just have a quick look at the underside of the board. If that's all right. Yeah. So can you just run us through as to here? Cause there's, you know, a slight raised ridge there in the forward section, flattening out the thought process around that. Yeah, so that's another um, key kind of new design with this nose specifically. There is a little bit more of a V ridge in the front. Um, that just kind of cleans up a little bit of the splashing that someone that hops on a planning hall, you know, kind of confuses them. Oh, why is it splashing so much? Um, but so that kind of keeps it that clean little cut in the beginning um, and also helps with the top side and underside of like just going through that chop we discussed. Um, but it quickly goes out to that nice spoony kind of design that the Blackfish is known for, which gives it that great forgiveness. Um, and that, you know, that lifts up the board. Basically the water enters the concave right where that happens. Yeah. So we're just trying, I'm always trying to prevent lift and then lift out the back. Um, you know, you'll see some boards kind of paddle like this. You'll see some boards kind of paddle like that, but I really like to have a real even, even board, um, when it's and the concave is really nice and deep under the main standing area. Yeah. This one's slightly different than the whiplash. Um, there's a little bit, it's a little shorter. Um, and, but it's deep under the, under the, it's further forward, deeper than the whiplash is. And that's just from that like lift it's adjusting to the lift there. So I wanted to directly go in there quicker. 
um, where the whiplash it slices more and then gets into the concave. So um, yeah, that, that provides like that centralized stability out here. There's a little bit of fall on the, on the rails to kind of give it that rounder kind of blending from the nose, yeah. but it does get a lot flatter right here. And that's specifically right where you stand. And something that small, believe it or not, like creates a lot of stability. Um, so that kind of continues and the edges get a lot sharper, quicker. And that's for control when you're, when you're surfing as well as riding bumps. Um, and it also like an edge releases faster. You know, if the, I mean, if we're being honest, we're not paddling like 20 miles an hour on these, right? So like yeah. to release, um, water is always important in the back half of these boards and water won't hold on to an edge where a uh, you know, round one, it'll crawl around the, the sides. So that just right, right when the water passes where you're standing, I'm just thinking about getting the water out. And that's, that's what the, the uh, progression of the concave does out flat with the, with the hard edges. So, and it's subtle that transition from yes. the concave into the flat, but then yeah, you are dead. Dead desert flat as you run off the back. Exactly, of the yeah. And the flat part too. Um, you know, we were worried about it making a giant wake because usually we had a nice V out the back, like yep. to promote uh, that flat water kind of cleanliness. But taking the V out really stable out the board for buoy turns and riding a wave and downwinding. But um, the the wake is funny. It's like a little bit noisier. But I think what people don't understand: if a wake is noisy, it's okay as long as it's not. Right, if there's a hole behind your board, it's sucking. It's sucking. But if it's if it's going like this and it's not sucking as much, that's basically exhaust, you know. Yep. So a louder wake, even though it's not like I mean, you're not going to wakeboard behind this thing, but it's louder than the than the V version is what I'm saying. And um, but it, it it still has that nice glidey, you know, kind of feel. And it's just noise. It's I call it exhaust. So um, we'll we'll take stability over a little bit of you know, aesthetics, you so know, you can take comfort in that for sure. For sure. Yeah. And then one comment we get, particularly with brushed carbon finished boards in store is, Oh, the board's really dirty. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 that is it. That's, can you run us through the finish yeah. as, to, as to why? And yeah, it's funny. Cause we do a lot of custom builds, right? So we, we were, uh, um, we still make a lot of custom boards, but at first we were just a custom brand only. And so we, so we're, we're always trying to figure out, you know, how to keep them light, obviously keep them cool. So the sun doesn't hurt them. And, but also how can we have fun with some color and all of our race boards for years and years were just a naked carbon, all black. Yeah. And, um, you know, that always looks cool, but obviously they, they, get scratched up and they get hot. That's the main thing. So, and so we started painting over the boards, but then they were getting really heavy. So then we started painting over boards and sanding it off to, in theory, take some weight off, but really it was pretty incremental. And then finally, you know, cause we've been making surfboards forever. There's a process where you actually put it in the resin in the hot coat. So in theory, you're not adding any weight because you're putting the resin on in it anyway and then you're squeegeeing it off, but the pigment's already in the resin, so the color still stays there. Yeah. Okay. And then when you have to finish sand it, of course it's taking a little bit more off. So that was like the best like weight we were getting from it, and you could still have some color. Sure, it had this garagey look, but I, um, it was new at the time, so people thought it was super cool. So now it's kind of been like aesthetically like a signature for us, and um, people do comment on it like, oh, what happened to your board? Did you have to fix it, whatever? But <laughs> the main reasons is, People like to see the technology in boards, so you can see the carbon. You know, people like to know, even though they know it's carbon, they like to see that it's there for one. Um, obviously, the it's fun to have colors on your board. And then um, this is as light as we can make it and add color. And it, the most important, it protects it from the sun. And that's the number one thing you do to take care of your board is protect it from the sun. And um, so, yeah, it's just like a signature look, kind of punk rock, kind of custom. And, um, but functional. Functional, yeah, yeah, there's design in everything we do. So absolutely, the look is by design, yeah. Uh, perfect, well, look, if you want to come and see the Blackfish for yourself, or if you want to come and paddle it, then come down to the test center here at the SUP company. Dave, I can't thank you enough for your time and calling in to see us here, thanks very much. Thanks for having me, man. You guys do a great job and happy to be here and we'll see you on the next one. Uh, great, thank you. <laughs>
Thanks for watching our video. If you've got any questions about what you've seen, why not give us a call in the shop or head over to thesubco.com. To stay up to date though with all of our videos, well, make sure you subscribe up here and hit the notification bell. But to see our next video, well, take a look up here.